Toastmasters. I know why I'm here. Of course I'm here to, to watch a wonderful contest. Our table topics contest is tonight. And if you're in the room, you're probably here for the very same reason. I just have, my name is Elizabeth Stevenson, I am your district sergeant at arms, and I have a few housekeeping rules for you. We all know what they are, but I must say them again. Please take out your phone and put it on silent. Or better still, just turn it off. We all know that there will not be any entering or leaving while the contest is going on, and the only time you can leave the room is during those minutes of silence. I would like to introduce to you our Toastmaster for the evening. Nope, I'm not introducing our Toastmaster. I'm introducing our contest chair. Our contest chair for this evening is our past district governor and distinguished Toastmaster, Pat Martin. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lieutenant Governor Education and Training.
Contestant number eight, Cynthia Sharp. And I'm probably, you're probably glad I'm not going through 15 or 20 of them, right? <laughs> we are so pleased that there are eight contestants this evening. I would ask Sergeant of Arms now escort all the contestants out of the room but four, contestant number one, Heather Vaughn.
Contestant number two, Steve Frew. Finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I. Contestant number two, Steve Frew. Contestant number three, Tom Keith. Finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I. Contestant number three, Tom Keith. Madam Contest, Toastmaster, and Toastmasters and Honored Guests, I am so looking forward to the day when I can stop worrying about days. When our contest chairperson talked about 365 days, I thought to myself, I don't know if I want to know how many days I got to look forward to because, <laughs> hey, I don't want to plan that much. Now I'm a guy. I like to take things on the fly. I don't want to be committed to stuff. Wait, a planner? What? You know what happens when you have a planner? If you're married. <laughs> you get plans. And they're not yours. You find out everything that you're going to do on day 28, 35, 64. And who knows what's coming down the pike on 364. 
And what happens when it's a leap year? <laughs> yeah, more! There's no getting past it. So I'm looking forward to the day, and I believe that day is coming, when I'm going to be in a better place, a heavenly place. And that heavenly place is called eternity. You know why it's called eternity? Because it goes on forever. <laughs> and you know why I love it? Because there are no day planners. <laughs> there are no day 365s. There are no need for anyone to do anything except to live in the moment, enjoy existence, and help others that you're with to be better, to be happy, and never to do chores. <laughs>
was a nerd. So I'm looking forward to the day when nerds all over the world can come together and be the men that they were born to be. Men and folks. Contestant number five, Matt Shavers. Finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I... Finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I... Contestant number five, Matt Shavers. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I am looking forward to the day when I don't have to use an alarm clock to wake up in the morning. I don't have to worry about getting up to go to work. What day is that you can all wonder and imagine? Retirement. Retirement day. <laughs> yes! I am looking forward to the day when I can sleep in, take my time. If I want to get up at 11 o'clock in the morning, that's fine. Maybe I'll stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning and not get up till 2 in the afternoon. <laughs> that will be fine too. <laughs> I am so looking forward to that because I've had many a friend that have actually retired, former co-workers. And they all say, you know, I don't know how I had time to get anything done when I was at work. Because in retirement, their lives are constantly full of activity. They're having so much fun. They're living such vibrancy. But yet, here I am, still having to deal with that darn alarm clock, still having to get up in the morning, drive through Chicago land traffic, that day will also be a day that I can let go of my road rage. <laughs> Much more than that. But the one thing that I won't have to worry about on that day is not being able to be a part of Toastmasters because I'm going to constantly be a member of Toastmasters. That's a job that I don't consider as work. I get to come, I get to stretch to my success as our theme here. The most important thing of that is, you don't get to retire from Toastmasters. <laughs> they reach the DTM, you get a DTM squared. You don't have that. There's more DTM. So the day that I'm looking forward to is retiring from the snooze alarm, but not from Toastmasters. Madam Toastmasters.
Contestant number six, Gina Coates. Finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I contestant number six, Gina Coates. Bone in him. 
we had a huge flood of dust plains. My husband and I had to leave the house with Bert, black night, black water, black Bert. He jumps in and disappears. All of a sudden, canoes are going by and I'm hearing screams, alligator, alligator, alligator. I start swimming and out of the black comes this red mouth and teeth. And I go, ah! And then Bert starts licking me. <laughs> Bert got me on that one. Madam Toastmaster. Contestant number eight, Cynthia Sharp. Finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I finish this statement. I am looking forward to the day when I contestant number eight, Cynthia Sharp.
please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots. Thank you. Understand your statement. 
If you're ever looking for me, you can always find me in the Forest Preserve. And I love to just walk and clear my thoughts and just try to work through thoughts every day. And with every new challenge, like table topics, I, I feel like just having that space to think things through, it's always, there's always something to discover. Please tell us what uh, club you're representing tonight. I am representing Allstate Speakeasy. Thank you. Thank you. And to make our contestants extra special, we have a special <coughs> award for them. Instead of just a regular paper certificate, they get a beautiful District 30 medallion with their name on it. seminar on public speaking <laughs> where I went because I was absolutely terrified to try a case. And of course I have to try a case. <laughs> People told me I did good but I felt terrible inside. So at this legal seminar which cost me hundreds of dollars <coughs> One of their suggestions was try Toys and Avengers, and the rest is history. I'm here for successfully speaking tonight, and I'm also a member of Luke Trust Me. writing, mentoring kids, and corporate social responsibility. But since our topic was all about what we want to do, and nobody wanted to stay at work, <laughs> that one person mentioned that, talk to us about mentoring kids. I'm very fortunate that I get a mentor, a second grader named Andrew. It's through a program called Kids Hope United. And it, what it does is that churches partner with a school. So we've all heard of church-state separation. This is a program where people from churches can go, because we're not going in there to try to teach a particular faith or religion. What we're doing is we're going in there to love kids. We go in there, I get paired up with one student, and I help him with his academics, but more importantly, I spend time with him. Kids don't get enough time to just talk. When you're a teacher, and I have great sympathy and empathy for teachers, when you have 20 or 30 kids and you have a curriculum you have to get through, you don't have time to listen to stories. For instance, I heard one person talk about that he found out that his student just had a death in the family that was a very tragic death. And the teacher felt terrible because she did not have the time to listen to him because she had to get through her course. But through Kids Hope United's program, he was able to sit there and listen to that kid talk as long as he wanted about what was going on with him, about how he felt, and what he needed to do. So that day, that mentor made such a difference in that kid's life. And that kid might not remember it 20 years from now, but he will remember that somebody came and cared about him. And that's what I love about this program. Thank you, Tom. representing? Tonight I'm representing the W Credit Toastmasters Club, triple one, uh oh, one nine. <laughs> Mary Leonard, okay. <laughs> 
no, that is not your true name, is it? I circled two things. Helicopter flying, although I think it's helicopter flying, and a quote from Batman Returns. So my curiosity is about the quote from Batman Returns. But I'm going to ask you to loop it into your helicopter flying. Is this a table topics contest or what? Okay. Go for it. Yeah, one minute. You yeah, got one minute. I teach middle school. This is easy. Yes. <laughs> the, the quote comes from Batman Begins when Batman is facing what he didn't know at this that time is arch enemy, Ra's al Ghul. And he tells Ra's al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul says to him that he wants him to join the League of Shadows. And Batman says, ah, oh, vigilantes. He says, no, a, a vigilante is just a man that's trapped in his own need for self-gratification. He could be locked up or destroyed. But if you make yourself more than just a man, if you develop yourself and become who you are, when you realize that moment, you will become something else entirely, which is legend, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> if those of you, I spent 14 years in the Marine Corps, if you've ever flown a Marine Corps helicopter, every time you get on that helicopter, it's that moment that you are either going to make it or you don't. And I teach my kids science, and science has this magic of really developing that skill of knowing why it works why this helicopter works or doesn't work, but, I, but because they're in middle school, they believe it works. Thank you so much. Christ Universal Temple, club number 666-595. my family to watch them and they'll say I really don't want to watch this it's going to be stupid and at the end they say that was actually pretty good <laughs> and mostly because foreign films don't tie every story up into a neat little bow at the end like American cinema does I mean we really get like the pabulum of entertainment and when you 
watch foreign films. One of my favorite ones is The Man With No Name, and it's about this man who wakes up with amnesia because he was beaten in the park, and he revisits some of the people in his life, and he finds out he was a real jerk. And he goes back, and, and he's such a wonderful man that he actually sort of reinvents himself and he even reconciles with the wife that he was a jerk toward also. And he becomes a new person. And just, there's so many movies that are just, the foreign humor is more subtle. I just love foreign movies. And my family has learned to love reading those subtitles. <laughs> Gary Grove Toastmasters, 104, 83, 21. inspires you the most and it's an aha moment of the audience. Can you describe when you're up here speaking as a professional speaker, how you recognize that aha moment in the audience? Yeah, I, when I speak, I promise them that they're going to laugh, they're going to learn, and they're going to leave with at least one aha. <coughs> and I look at the audience a lot. I actually divide the audience into nine. Uh, left, right, and center, front, middle, back. So I try to make sure I speak to each section, and all of a sudden I'll just see someone kind of go, <laughs> and physically see that, oh my gosh, I can do that, I can do that tomorrow. So I think just watching your audience, being comfortable enough as you speak to look at them, you'll capture it. Thank you. Please tell us what club. Windy City Professional Speakers. <laughs> And contestant number eight was Cynthia. So, a hobby of yours is making fermented foods. <laughs> now, you know, I, I have biological projects growing in my refrigerator. You know, because I don't clean it enough and it's only me and I don't eat it and I buy it and I grow, you know, it's like the take home from take home from the restaurant and then a week later you go, oh, what was that? So that to me is fermented foods, but you actually do this. So tell us what that's about. Oh, thank you so much for asking. I forgot that I put that down on there. I'm like, I can't remember what I put on there. I do make fermented foods because I'm really excited about probiotics. Did you know that our body is more bacteria than anything else? We have more bacteria in our body than we have human cells. And I've been learning quite a bit about probiotics and what we need to do to put back the things that have been taken away. And so I make, I make kombucha, which is fermented tea. Actually, I, at, at dinner I was out in my Jeep drinking it. It's not alcoholic. It's not. And also, I was, I was telling someone, I also had the sardines mixed with the cultured vegetables, which are basically, uh, it's like a sauerkraut, but it's not pasteurized. And so there's probiotics in it, and it's live, and it's full of wonderful, antioxidants and, and vitamins, and so I do that, and I also make kefir water soda. So I get these, the cultures online, you can have them sent, and it is, I used to be addicted to Diet Coke, no more. I make these kefir sodas that are so fermented, you can pour it, and it's um, made with coconut, I just said, um, the coconut water. <laughs> it's made with coconut water, and uh, I just realized, and molasses and it tastes like cream soda and it's got a real wonderful natural carbonation to it. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. Well, right. and Tell us what club you're representing. Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yay! One more time for this group. Thank you. Thank you. 
Susan, two rounds of applause. Thank you. 